We are officially in the fourth and final quarter of 2023. And I don't know what your year has looked like, but for me, I am super excited to bring this year to a close because I'm hopeful that next year is going to be better because this year was, you know what I mean? And the thing is though, that it's not just this year that's been, it's been the last like three years at least of my life. Now, today's video is just going to be like a sit down, chit chat kind of conversation between friends, you know, um, and there's two parts to today's video. Those are four fingers. There's two parts. The first being that I want to share some kind of personal and vulnerable stories with you guys because and I talk about this a lot on the podcast and everywhere on Instagram and everything. But to me, I believe that vulnerability brings vulnerability. And I believe that the purpose of an online platform or an online space or, you know, the fact that we're all connected now is for us to make each other better and hopefully um, tell our stories so that other people can feel the courage to do the same. So that's why I want to be vulnerable with you guys the first half. And then in the second half, I'm going to share a book that has changed, completely changed the way that I've been living ever since I read it. And I read it back in 2021, I believe. Um, and I mean, it's a book you've probably heard of a million times before, but maybe if I bring it to you guys in within like a more practical and more personal uh, framework, it will resonate and maybe help you guys with your lives so without any further ado life is tough you guys <laughs> it is life is 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 life is hard it throws curveballs at us left and right when we least expect them hence curveballs and i i've been going through <laughs> lots and lots of these curveballs over the last three years so let me start you guys from the beginning in 2020 2020 um, I got married to a man I believed was the love of my life and I genuinely thought that this was it and that, you know, nothing but happiness would come of this. Uh, not to spare you to the details, the very gory details. Um, we were married for 375 days before I packed up my things and left and we got a divorce. Um, and the divorce was finalized in 2022. So I left home 2021, got married 2020, left home 2021, my divorce was finalized in 2022. At the start of 2022, we had a dog, my ex-husband and I, and he was just the joy, most joy-giving little creature ever. And back then I had insisted that um, we get him, even though my husband, ex-husband thought that Maybe we should postpone, maybe we should wait a little bit. I really insisted because I needed any source of love in my life. And my dog was everything and more. He gave me all the love in the world. And then he became my emotional support dog where I genuinely relied on him. And as I left my marriage home, moved back in with my parents and had to go through the like, the extreme feeling of regression that comes with that, my dog was just a constant. He was a support, he was a love like no other. Except for the fact that in March of 2022, um, my dog and I went on a walk and all of a sudden I was pulling him on the leash. He became really heavy. I look back and he was seizing. Turns out he was poisoned and also to spare you the gory deta details of that and also because I cannot relive them. He passed away the next morning after a very long night at the vet, um, trying to save his life. So that's an intense timeline, like 2020, get married, have a horrible year, 2021, leave marriage, 2022, dog dies, and then divorce becomes finalized. But that's the thing, I thought, I thought it was over now, you know? I thought it was over and that I could breathe. Except that in January of this year, 2023, my mother got diagnosed with cancer. 
again, she had been diagnosed in 2017, but was cured. And here the cancer was again. And ever since then, I'm recording this in September, it's been nine months of our entire family going through that and watching her have to be the first person, like first hand trauma on her part, have to go through that. So why am I saying all of this? I'm saying all of this because whether or not your life up until this point has um, presented itself to you in, in any way that is any like in the least bit as dramatic as my life has been over the last three years, chances are eventually you are going to experience, you know, difficult things. And meanwhile, <laughs> the curveballs keep happening and life keeps handing us these beautiful gifts <laughs> wrapped in black freaking gift wrapping paper. Um, and somehow we're supposed to still human, right? We're supposed to still perform. We're supposed to still work hard at our dreams and make things happen for ourselves. It's like, it's insane the duality that we have to live with just by being human. And I have figured out that there is one thing that keeps us from achieving our goals. Now, and like performing well and doing what we're supposed to be doing in life despite how difficult it really is. Um, I, I got the idea for this video because I was sitting and I re was like reflecting with myself saying, okay, so there's September, October, November, December, four more months left of this year. And I went back to the goals and dreams that I had and you know, the things that I'd set at the start of this year and was kind of like, okay, there are some things that I could still do, you know, there are some things that I could still achieve, but the number one thing that held me back, even just in my mind, as I was thinking, was anxiety. And I, I'm not talking about the kind of anxiety that is like crippling to the point where you need medication or you need to go see a therapist or whatever, although that's perfectly fine too. I still see a therapist all the time. But I'm talking about the kind of anxiety that just is a continuous source of like, it's just a continuous nuisance and it keeps us A, from achieving our goals and dreams, and B, it makes our lives, the quality of our lives, which are already super hard, like our lives are already extremely hard. Anxiety, the self, the kind of self-inflicted anxiety that I wanna talk about today, causes the quality of the lives that we have to decrease, and then it ends up affecting the lives of those around, around us as well and the people that we care about as well. And what is the root of that anxiety? I believe it is caring too much about too many things. You know, I, I, I told you the, the, the stories of <laughs> my past three years, not, not because, oh my gosh, like, doom like this is horrible i told these stories because this is all of our stories the details of our stories are all different but we all face struggles we all face difficulties and what my difficulties have done is that they have given me perspective on life you know when one too many things go go or goes wrong in your life and, and you are, you come face to face with the fact that you are so small, so, so small. You start realizing, okay, I can now see all the other things in my life through this lens, through this new perspective that I was given. And I have discovered through this new lens that I was gifted through my suffering is that I care too much about too many things. I will be walking down the street and someone will catcall me, which I live in Cairo, Egypt. That happens. And I will, I will have the rest of my day be ruined. I will get into such a horrible mood because some sly man walking down the street catcalled me. Now, of course, this is a whole other conversation. But um, 
whatever like I will get the plate that I order at the restaurant will not be as delicious as I remembered having it the time before and I'll get super grumpy and super mad and whatever um, someone will like let's say my parents or my sister or whatever someone will just not say the perfect thing at the perfect time and I will like freak out because how how are you not saying the perfect thing at the perfect time i want to say something the neighbors have construction work and i thought they were done but if you hear construction work that's what that is and i really hope it doesn't ruin the whole video for you but anyway life you guys life is hard and we just cannot afford to care about everything We just can't. It's just the reality of the matter. On to part two of the video. I'm pretty sure, pretty sure you have heard or seen, heard about or heard of or seen this cover right here. This book right here. Am I right? You've seen it. You've seen it. Chances are you've probably even read it, right? But how about we take it and look at it through the lens of real life, through the lens of real experience that I just told you about, a real person's story. The subtle art of not giving an F. That's what we're going to say. Okay. You would think that this book is about not caring, right? You would think that this is a guide. At least that's what I thought when I first picked it up. I'm like, yes, please tell me how I can stop caring. I want to stop caring. It's exhausting me. And so I picked up this book. But jokes on you and on me because this book is not about not caring. It's not about not giving an F. It's about choosing what Fs to give. It's about choosing what to care about. Now, Manson, it's uh, by Mark Manson, and Manson essentially says that we're all born with like a certain limited number of Fs, right? And if we go about our lives wasting our Fs on this and this and this and people's reactions and the exact details of our lives working out exactly as we want them to and all, all that kind of thing, if we spend the rest of our lives giving wasting our Fs, what's going to suffer? What's going to pay the consequence of that? The actual things that actually deserve our Fs. And so essentially what Manson is saying is that we need to think about, self-reflect and think about what are the things that matter to us? What are the important things to us? What's important to you? Um, I watched a video where Mark Manson talks about his book and he was basically saying that this is a book about values um, and the reason why it stands out from like the rest of self-help books is because what he says he says that self-help books in general assume that we all care about the same things that we all want the exact same things when that's just not the case we are all very different very unique individuals and our value systems vary and therefore We cannot assume that we all care about the exact same things and therefore here's a self-help book that'll tell you about how to care about money so much that you end up with a yacht at the end of the year like what if that's not what i care about um and so in this book mark manson basically asks us to consider our values prioritize our values look within ourselves deep enough ask ourselves the right questions What do we care about? And then devote all our Fs to that thing or to those things. For me, some of my values and some of the things that I care about, and it's not limited to just those things, but like I care about my faith, I care about my family, I care about my physical well being, and I care about my creative work. Now that I know what those things are, I can direct my Fs at those things, care so, so much about them, be willing to suffer in order to reap the reward at the end, be willing to endure the pain, be willing to 
have difficult days because at the end of the day, I want to, let's say, write a book or because and writing a book is arduous and it's hard work, right? But I can't be wasting my F's on what this person said about me behind my back or what are people gonna say about me once I start my YouTube channel? And this is actually a video that I created as well. Um, it's called Embracing the, the Cringe and I will link to it below and I will also put it in the box over here. Um, but before I started this YouTube channel, I gave an F about what people are gonna say about me, how cringy it's gonna feel and how cringy it's gonna be when people see me speaking into a camera, especially people that I know. But my creative work is something I give an F about. That's a, and I give a bigger F about doing the creative work that I feel like I was born to do than I do about what other people are gonna say. And therefore, I learned to not give an F, to embrace the cringe, to not care what people are gonna say about me. What examples of that exist in your life? What is something, what are some Fs that you have been giving away, that you've been spending and wasting instead of focusing on the things that are actually important in your life? I wanna read you guys a few quotes, okay, from the book. Manson says, the avoidance of suffering is a form of suffering. The avoidance of struggle is a struggle. The denial of failure is a failure. Hiding what is shameful is in itself a form of shame. Pain is an inextricable thread in the fabric of life, and to tear it out is not only impossible, but destructive. Attempting to tear it out unravels everything else with it. To try to avoid pain is to give too many Fs about pain. Let me read that again. To try to avoid pain is to give too many Fs about pain. Who had ever thought of that? In contrast, if you're able not to give an F about the pain, you become unstoppable. And the question is, what is it that you are willing to suffer for? Not that suffering is gonna not happen. Not that hardship is not gonna, is just gonna disappear from life. It's gonna, it's gonna exist. I care about my happiness, so I left my home. I gave an F about my happiness, about, about my future, so I left my marriage. I gave an F about my mother, so I stuck by her side. And here we are, we're all here, still sticking by her side. What is it that you care so much about that you're willing to endure the pain that comes with it? Um, another really cool point that Manson makes in the book is, he says that like in the 21st century, most of us, most of the people in the world are no longer like struggling to survive. We're no longer running from lions and like, you know, fight or flight and all that stuff. Um, and yet we still suffer the anxiety that raises our um, cortisol levels way through the roof on a daily basis about things that this is not what the cortisol was made to protect us from. Um, and so let me read you this quote. He says, our crisis is no longer material. It is existential. It is spiritual. We have so much effing stuff and so many opportunities that we don't even know what to give an F about anymore. And isn't that true? We are overstimulated left and right. We open Instagram and we see so many people posting about things that like we should somehow feel the need to covet, that we should somehow feel the need to want. Um, someone else's lifestyle, someone else's thing that that person owns, whatever, someone else's husband, wife, like the list goes on and on and on. We are so overstimulated and we don't take the time to take a step back and be introspective and think. And we end up giving Fs about too many things, way, way too many things, when that's, that's just not how we were created to live. And so life is hard, guys. I think that's just the conclusion that I've arrived to in my life. Life is hard. It's gonna throw very unexpected curveballs in our faces. And some of these curveballs are gonna be so, so unforeseen and extremely painful and traumatizing. Losing my dog was a massive trauma. And life is hard. We don't need to make it harder on ourselves by embracing this anxiety when there is another way of living. We could just not be anxious. We could find a way 
That's it. Self-reflect, look within, come up with a list of five major things that we really care about and five minor things that we care about and focus about directing our Fs that direction. Anything else, just let it pass. Let it go. Feel it and let it go. Don't give a crap about it. <laughs> Don't give an F about it. Don't let it linger. I feel like that happens with a lot of self-awareness and self-reflection. And as we are nearing the end of this year, and as we are, you know, looking forward to closing this year well, finishing well, finishing this race of 2023 well, let us decide on what the things are that we actually care about. Let us capitalize on those and see how we can be as efficient as possible. Thank you so, so much for watching my video. Thank you so much for being here. Please like and share and subscribe. But you don't have to if you don't want to. But I mean, it helps a lot. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video.